Well, hello again, and welcome to another episode of Holding History. Uh, as you can see, I am holding a little bit of history here uh, today. This is uh, a little book from my uh, antique and vintage book collection. I don't have very many pieces, but some of the ones that I do have are, are rather interesting. Uh, this is an 1833 arithmetic book. Uh, it is an American printing, um, and uh, as you can see, very well worn here. Uh, but uh, you know, if if you're going to get uh, get some some history, why not ha get it from an actual historical book rather than just a history book, a historical book? Uh, so this is a, an early edition of uh, an arithmetic primer type book, uh, and it would be a first lessons type. I'll show you the frontispiece here. Here's uh, some someone practiced their ABCs here in the front. Uh, you see the old style cursive there, and it was obviously written with uh, an ink well. So here we have Intellectual Arithmetic Upon the Inductive Method of Instruction by Warren Colburn. Uh, Colburn's First Lessons. And you see the printing there, 1833, in Boston. So, uh, you know, a lot of uh, a preface here. I certainly won't bore you with the details. Uh, you know, the, the way that they would write, uh, let's see, what are we at here, about 180 years ago, uh, the way that they would write and cover a point uh, in, in books of this era, gosh, they just, they were so thorough. And the language is just so beautiful that, you know, we have to kind of pause and say, wait a minute, I'm going to have to diagram that out even to, to uh, figure out what it is that they were trying to say. Uh, those who were educated were very, very well educated, it would seem, or at least the ones who were publishing these works like this. But the reason I'm showing it to you is because all throughout this book, when you actually get into the calculations and the word problems, uh, all of the arithmetic, or lots of the arithmetic, centers around... Um, uh, money transactions and coin transactions and figuring and keeping ledgers and things like that. Uh, you'll see this one up here. Problem number 28. A man bought three sheep for $15 but could not sell them again for so much by $8. How much did he sell them for? See, I mean, give that to a, give that even to a fourth grader today. And like, what, what did that just say? I'm not even sure what that said. Uh, but anyway, one of the other main reasons I wanted to show it to you, not just because there are a lot of money transactions in here, uh, let's see, page 38. I was looking through this earlier. Believe it or not, there are some tough problems in here to try and solve. Let's see, page 38. All right, you start at the top. I don't know if you can read it from this distance. Uh, problems like problem six, what do nine pounds of veal come to at six cents a pound? Uh, what cost eight pair of shoes at three dollars a pair? Things like that. But then you get down to the bottom See problem 13, it says, in one penny there are four farthings. How many farthings are there in six pence? How many farthings are there in eight pence? How many farthings are there in nine pence? So what this is telling me anyway, and this is just kind of a guess in my part, and it's very famous that Spanish coins uh, would still were still circulating at this period in American history, but apparently there were still quite a number of British coins uh, that would have been circulating uh, as legal tender as well. So we have uh, the children here being taught uh, in cents and dollars and also in farthings and pence. Uh, there are also, also a lot of references to shillings uh, throughout the book as well. So something interesting to me. Uh, and then let's see, I had a page marked. Yeah, here it is. Uh, this is just, you know, you'll, you'll be working on your, uh, you know, if you were in school, you're working on something and you do a little doodling. <clears throat> and sometimes you may would write the date and say, hmm, I wonder if someone in the future would see this date and, and be like, oh, that was a long time ago. Well, it happened here. Uh, someone was doing their work and did a little doodle and said January 27, 1874. So some kid was holding this, working through these uh, working through these fractions, getting all uh, a little bit distracted and decided to write the date. So I still have that. And it's, uh, what is that, about 142 years ago. So quite a while back. So anyway, a neat little interesting book um, to give a little perspective uh, even of what kind of money was circulating still. Uh, in the United States during this time period. Again, about, let's see, 180, 183 years uh, old here on this book. So, uh, given it was printed in 1833, it could have been printed after that. As we can see from the writing, it was certainly used long after its printing. Uh, but I wouldn't be surprised if this would date from 1830s, 1840s at the, at the very latest. So again, thanks for watching. Sorry there are no coins or silver in this video. Uh, but uh, anyway, just thought it would be so interesting to take a look at something that would give us a little different perspective uh, on uh, a certain time period in American history. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed.